What's going on everybody? My name is Ben Johnson. Welcome back for another Reverse Files Engineering tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to speak about the concept of binary. And we're also going to talk about the concept of hexadecimal. But before I start that, I want to talk about my new setup that I'm trying. As you can see, I'm sort of writing really messy. Uh, but basically I want to demonstrate some concepts through drawings. It'll be much easier for me um, when it comes to editing and it should be great for you when it comes to learning. So basically I've got my iPad which is taking um, input from my stylus and I'm just using it to demonstrate concepts as I said. But basically my iPad is airplane to my MacBook Air which I'm then using a piece of software called Reflection to actually capture the screen on that. And in order to capture the iPad screen that goes to my computer, I'm using a screen recorder to do that. So that's basically the insane loop I'm jumping through just to record my screen on my iPad. But anyway, we'll see if it works. Alright, before I start talking about binary, I want to talk about our own counting system, which is called Base 10, or otherwise known as Decimal. Now, with base 10, we humans, or English speaking humans, I'm not sure about foreign languages, but basically we can count sheep using the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we have 10 different digits. Um, this is why it's called base 10, or decimal meaning 10, right? So that's where those names come from. So if we had a number of 481 and we wanted to represent it with our system using these digits down here, these not 10 digits, our 10 digits, we can do this by, uh, we know that this is the 1 column, we know that this is the 10 column, and we know that this is the 100s column. So in order to represent our number, we use the 4 from this thing, and we go 4 times 100, which is 400, we go 8 times 10, which is 80, sorry, plus those together, not times, and then we um, add 1 times 1, which is 1, to get our number, 481. Pretty simple, right? And we should all know this. So, I want to start off by saying computers are different. Unlike us humans, or English-speaking humans, they use base, base 2, or mostly known as binary. And you probably know what it is, binary. And we get binary from bin meaning two. So computers can only use two digits, and these digits are zero and one. So they can represent their numbers using just two digits, which is these numbers here, zeros and ones. So asking, well, why do they count in base two? Why don't they use base ten like us humans? Well, there's a very reasonable explanation for that and that is because all our electronic devices whether it be our iPhone, our computer, our calculator is made up of millions of switches which allow it to represent data and these devices keep track of these switches and how they are represented and these switches can either be on or off and we represent these states as 0 or 1. And that's why um, computers only use base 2. Now, the reason why we use a bunch of switches in these devices is because of how circuits and electronic works. But I'm sort of diving into a field that I'm not familiar with. But basically, uh, electronics, we have a switch here and a circuit is off, so that's an off circuit, and a circuit can also be on and not and be working. So an off circuit is obviously not working, so it would be represented as a zero if the switch was off, and an on circuit would be working with the switch down, just like our light in our homes. But I'm sort of just diving into something that I'm not very familiar with that. Alright, so I mentioned that computers are different and they use zeros and ones with their base 2 system. But I didn't mention how they actually represent 
the numbers we can represent with our base 10 system. And it's actually quite simple, it's not that complicated, uh, but it can get very messy as you get into large numbers. But we're going to start simple. Now, you may have heard the term 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit, and it can also go on, but we won't go into that. Um, and with these bit, oh, also I have to mention that zero, a zero or a one, one of these zeros or a one is a bit, right? So a bit can be a zero or it can be a one, right? So an eight bit system uses a collection of eight zeros or ones, right? So they could have eight zeros, they could have eight ones, they could have a combination of zeros and one, and, but they have eight of them. And same with 16, 32, they just have a collection of 16 bits, they have a collection of 32 bit and 64 bits. Now the larger the bit collection, the higher number they can represent. Now let me give you a demonstration. Say we want to represent the number 66, right? And we're in an 8-bit system. Say we're in an arcade, one of those 80s arcade system, and they only had 8-bit technology around the time. All right, so to represent the number 66, we have to map out our range. And to do this, we go start with 1, then we times 1 by 2, like our base 10 system where we times our rightmost digit and then we times it by 10 and then we times it by 10 and times it by 10 as we get 1, our 10's column, our 100th column. We do the same but we only times it by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. Now the amount of times we did that was 8 times. So here's 1, Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, and here's the one. And you'll find that we have eight values there. Now to represent our number 66 is we have to test all our numbers starting from the leftmost number, which is 128. So does 128 go into 66? No, it doesn't. So remember our switches, we can either have states of zeros and ones. So we put a zero in because that's false, right? It doesn't work. Does 64 going to 66? Yes, it does. So we put a 1 there. Does 64 and 32, so we're adding these numbers as we get a 1. So does 96 go into 66? No, it doesn't. Uh, does 64 and 16 go into 66? No. Does 64 and 8 go into 66? No, it doesn't. Does 64 and 4 go into 66? No, 68 does not go into 66, so put a 0. Does uh, 64 and 2 go into 66? Yes, it does because it gets our number. And then we still continue over to the rightmost number, which is our 1. And does 67 go into 66? No, it doesn't. And we get our number here, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And that's our number there. So that was basically a crash course in getting our numbers with our system. And I also want to mention, like, if you know about old arcade system and know that they had limited amount of colors and they sort of had the same amount of tones, is because 8-bit systems can only represent 256 values. They can only count to 256. If you added up all these numbers here, it would equal 256. And the reason why they only had a limited amount of colors, they had a limited amount of tones, is because they could only have 256 values. So they could only have 256 colors, they could only have 256 tones and that sort of thing. So that's why they were sort of really um, like they were the way they were because of this limitation of 256 values.